Welcome into another episode of the Young Entrepreneurs Network podcast. This week, I am fucking buzzing with the guest. We've got Ben Pearson, who has been a client of mine for a very short space of time for compared to others that have been on, but it feels like I've known Ben for, for decades already, and the value he's going to provide to you guys today is going to be immense. I've learned so much from Ben in a short space of time, so have so many others within the group, both young and lazy, and he's literally flew up just for this just for this, mate. So thank you so much for coming up for a start, bro. No um, problem at all. It's amazing to have you here, mate. But for anyone who doesn't know you, do you want to introduce yourself, tell them a bit about what you do? Yeah, sure. From a, a professional standpoint or anything else? Everything. <laughs> uh, no my name, as introduced, is Ben Pearson. Um, I found YNL through an Instagram ad, basically, yes. and found yourself. And yep. I think I haven't stopped talking to you daily for about four months now. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, I am 24 years old and I work in the e-learning solutions industry. Most people won't know what that is, but basically we do everything sort of across the board for education online from delivery, quality standardization, through to tutor assessment, coaching, mentoring, you name it, we do it all basically. And um, I found you guys because sort of going from across COVID, across what my previous plans have been in life to finding what I was doing was so niche. Didn't have anyone to relate to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one really understood it. Uh, not even Mrs. or my actually mm. I should say. But um, yeah, so I got an ad off Andy saying, are you feeling lonely? I was like, hell fucking yeah, I am. <laughs> Swiped straight up to that, applied. And now I talk to you lot all days. Boys yeah. that live, you know, a good like 600 miles away from me and I barely yeah. understand the accent. But yeah. needless to say, it's all worth it. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that, bro. I mean, the e-learning education space is interesting because I think a lot of people will know that as like, the typical courses on specific, like say it's like e-com or property, mm -hmm. whatever, whereas what you do is very different. Yeah, um, you, yeah you've got um, e-learnings industry, there's two aspects, regulated and non-regulated. Mm. Non-regulated makes up a good 60, 70% and it's growing every day yeah. because you've got everyone that thinks they're a coach of some sort, yep. slapping how to make Canva templates and mm. make a million pound a month on Instagram. Uh, whereas you've got regulated, which is, in the UK specifically, you have like a level system. Mm. So formal education, GCSEs is level two, yep. A-levels, college level three, first year of university level four, five, six, degree level, seven is masters, eight is postgraduate, doctorate, stuff like that. Mm. That is the regulated and formal education scheme. And if you see a qualification that says the level two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in whatever it may be, you know that's regulated. Mm. Some people still get away and say, oh, I've got my level one course in this they're calling it their own, yep. that's unregulated. But basically that's the two differences and we mm. work very heavily in the regulated format. Mm. So a lot of B2B over B2C, yep. which is preferable. Um, a lot of sort of working with people that want to develop specific to their industry, their position, ambition, what it may be, not so much looking to develop like something specific to a platform, mm. right? Does that make sense? Like having a skills in like social media marketing, yep. we, have modules in that but there's not a qualification that's regulated in that hmm. yet <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> which is yep. come on to that later but um so we work in the more regulated form the non-regulated mm. and you know that came about because we did provision spe specifically in that went into then quality standardization coaching and mentoring within that our own framework recognition now we're going to our own course writing yep. and the, the snowball Gross, if that makes sense. So how the hell did you end up in this space? Right. <laughs> Good thing I've practiced this about 700 times. Um, so I got into this uh, a lot by chance, uh, a lot by network and position, but also a lot of just pure like 80 hour weeks, I've told you before. Yeah. So it's a good blend. Uh, I started doing website design off the back of my failed uni degree uh, just before COVID sort of took over. So I just started my first year at uni. Um, I was at Brighton University doing business and marketing. And I decided at the time, I'm doing three years of education. I may as well start now than start later after the three years. So I started almost like a little side hustle, quote unquote, which was called Digit Digital, Digital Solutions. Social media marketing, website design, uh, and all sorts of anything I learned, I wanted to put into practice, see what I liked the most, see what I would then look to do in a career later down the line. Um, basically, long story short, COVID happened. And Brighton Uni dealt with it by going all first years, fuck off. <laughs> they gave us a year automatically. And that was in February. So I automatically had like another six months to just go, mm. okay, well, let's just work for a bit. Now, in my area, specifically, which I focused on locally, there is not much infrastructure. There's no large company, so to speak. It's a lot of middle tier and solo people, things like that, sole traders. A lot of them wanted, you know, because we're forced to go online, 
for sustaining doors, all these things lost their income mm. or at least a large portion of it. And we're like, we need to go online because that's still going, that's pumping. Like you, we've never seen such a massive commerce growth in the UK, specifically in that economic space besides COVID. So I was just inundated with interest. Like when the curfew, during the curfew was on, we went loud, yeah. like past like 10 p.m. I would go out after that because I knew no one was on the streets and I'd go out and put flyers through doors because <laughs> <laughs> I knew no one would be around the next day to put anything else through and no one would come and steal them out of the, like, like, like things like that. Yeah. I was doing dodgy shit and I'd get like, almost like I'd say nearly everyone I spoke to or cold called, emailed, put leave it through, came back to me wanting something. And I did, I did like more work than I've done in my entire life, probably in the space of like six months. Um, while this is going on, uh, the other sort of key aspect to this is my dad, who is basically 97% deaf in his left ear, 93 in his other. Um, basically, he was working in online tutoring. So he's been a college tutor his entire life, works in education. He was a nurse before that. Um, basically lost his job when I was about 16 because he was hearing. Just mm. lost his hearing due to nerve degeneration. Uh, he went into online tutoring, internal verification, college standardization for the company that I now own. Mm. I basically took one look at what he was doing and thought that is incredibly lucrative. And also I'm in a position now where I can give back to everything he's given me. So I approached the woman that owned the company and bought her out of it basically. Nice. I liquidated Digit at the time. I went, I'm fucking done with that. Uh, put all the capital into SBS bar a slight amount so I could still survive uh, and bought it out. And then spent uh, from that day about every waking hour of my life <laughs> for the past three years, uh, developing it into what it's become now. And then the past two years, again, expanding it into a bunch of other avenues. Yeah. Um, and I've said to you before, a lot of that comes down to timing. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to have the success I did with Digit if it wasn't for COVID. But I also wouldn't have got into this industry if it hadn't been for my dad. Um, like I now employ him, which is mm. really cool. Um, we work together on so many things, but like we sort of, what we do is very separate. So he does a lot of delivery stuff where I do yeah. most of the business administration, things like that. But um, yeah, we've grown it from what was sort of, you know, um, to be quite frank on rankings, it was like the 50 something largest provider. We're now the second largest in the UK. Mm. Uh, and we're growing in every other avenue we do as well. Yeah. So like I said to you today, we're already expanding into another sort of um, leveraged point where we can offer something else along those yeah. lines, which is really cool. So that's how I sort of got to where I'm at. Now, yes, Lovely. from without actual specifics, the revenue it was doing then compared to now? Um, so it's easy to go off a monthly basis yeah. solely because uh, we take an average because it's like doing it off quarters, but you have every year the same, you have a pickup in January, massive drop off through summer, pick up again through September yeah. and then drop off and back to January, yeah. if that makes sense. So on average, then we were doing maybe like nine, 10 yeah. grand a month. Yeah. Now it's six figures. Yeah, like it's and it just it rolls, rolls, rolls. But that's also not just the course vision alone. That's because, like, that sole aspect that was like seven to ten, yeah, is now more like fifty to sixty. Mm. But because of every other avenue, it's like double, triple, quadruple mm. that in some months. Yeah, which is wonderful to be quite honest. And um, I guess like from your dad's. Well, firstly, what did your dad think when you actually when you done it? Um, well, he actually unintentionally gave me the idea anyway because mm. he said like. I'm looking at these costs. I'm seeing the the course coming. Man, they must be make. She must be making a lot of money off this. Like I'm only getting paid this amount of it, and I was thinking like lucrative, like this, like that model. Yeah. I want it. Um, when I decided to do that, I didn't do it without telling him. I said, "Shall we do this?" Mm. I included him very much in it. Yeah. Uh, my capital went through for it, but we did it together. So to speak, mm. so he's always on board, and he um, it's only probably in the last sort of like year he's fully appreciated how much it's taken to get it to where it is now and what it actually is like yep. the leveraging point so he comes from a very um like he's had more like he's had different career changes than i've had like hot dinners mm -hmm. <laughs> you know um he's been electrician uh prison guards tutor nurse you name it he's done like everything yep. um and he's always hopped to and fro just tried loads of different things he hasn't stuck from many things in his life yeah um this one where he's seen me stick at it he's suddenly gone wow you can actually like I see how much you can actually achieve by sticking mm. with one thing. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, you you had me and I don't think you expected 24 years later for me to hire you, but you know, it is what it is. Um, which is quite nice, uh, to be fair, because he's, you know, without being too dim on it, like him losing his hearing, he lost his whole career off that. So yep. him now working with me and having our relationship is really, really nice. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's I, th I think, I haven't really fully asked him, but I think he's, he's happy with what we do. Yep. It's very anxiety provoking for him because mm -hmm. it's like, um, he's like, if something was to go wrong and lose this, lose that and everything, but it's just like, you know, 
I have to manage that as well as yeah. manage the business to, to some respect yeah. because he doesn't understand overly well the business aspect, but that's fine. That's what yeah. he needs to do. He's very good at what he does in delivery. Yeah. Talking to people through like Zoom subtitles, which is mm. great. Um, through his actual delivery of education and his understanding of the market, it's really good. Yeah. Business side sort of left to me, which is quite yeah. nice. So, it's yeah. fucking marginal. Oh, I've been curious. I've never actually got the chance to ask you in regards to like how his role is actually fulfilled from an online aspect if he's deaf with the subtitles side of things. Yeah, so yeah, um, he can lip read. Yeah. And we're not BSL, but subtitles. Hmm. Like the fact that Zoom and Teams came out of subtitles is like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's annoying because some of our partners just seem to only want to use Google Meet. Mm. which um, has the crappy subtitles, but that's how he does it. That's yep. how he does it. Um, occasionally, it's quite funny because we used to sit in the same office, mm. but because he can't hear his own voice, yeah. thankfully he hasn't had any speech impediments as of yet, but mm. um, he can't fully automate his volume. So he'll start like booming off in the corner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm sat there like, turn it down. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, we it's been like that now for, yeah, like four years we've been doing that's this. That's bad, so. bro. That's yeah. unreal. And I guess like, see, so back when it was like nine, ten k per month when you initially mm -hmm. um, bought it over, what has been the jump in like team size responsibilities? Like how, if you take us through those few years as like a, a journey? Yeah, so we're at 70 now, personnel. Um, not all employed. Quite a lot of that is like they're self-employed who pay an agreed amount per month, stuff like that, because they yep. prefer that model. In e-learning, it's very rare you get people that do like, a set job like their job i'm an employed tutor yeah never happens because there's not enough work for it yep. off the models and stuff it's, it's not like a traditional teacher job yeah um usually all they do is like a one-to-one -one assessment per student mm. so what we had to begin with i think we had six tutors mm. and the previous owner and yep. they outsourced all the tutoring was outsourced excuse me uh unlike the self-employed model yep. and they had one iv which is internal verifier mm. when you have someone do a course it's regulated. Um, that qualification is required to be assessed and internally verified, like the GCSE or a Scottish mm -hmm. Hire. Someone marks it and the marking is remarked. Yep. That's the same sort of process. Now I'll come to that in a second because we do IV outsourcing for loads of other providers, mm -hmm. which is why, our, again, our uh, personnel amount is so much higher because we have a team of IVs, yep. a team of tutors. We have um, business developers, uh, business managers for each subsidiary myself uh, and some other like senior members yep. and then obviously we have sort of more outsourced stuff which is like our reception team and things like that they do the call cool logs yep. uh, administrators and things like that but um, it's more been a matter of like you would know this very well um, one of my main things to let go is letting go of like the reins for the yep. whole business because where it's grown I'm only capable of so much and I was yep. finding myself constantly burnt out or working a ridiculous amount and losing mm -hmm. other aspects of my life to maintain this sort of constantly inflating balloon so to speak yep. The more it's inflates, it's going to pop. So it's finding a way to disperse that energy into other ones yep. so it's manageable. Um, that's been a scare for me. So uh, traditionally, like the our head tutor, who's now full-time with us, um, they were just a tutor that was like on, you know, they did maybe like 10 students a month, mm -hmm. which is maybe to them like 600 pound. Um, they're now on a salary and they oversee all the allocations, stuff like that, so I don't have yep. to do it. That's how we've sort of gone. As we've developed and grown, as the demands come in, we've, instead of bringing people in, We've developed the people that were already yeah. there and brought people in underneath that. So yeah. if that makes sense. I guess like I, I'd imagine the question on a lot of people's lips is like, how the how like how how did you get into this space? Which is something why I was so excited about this episode is because it's it's different. It's yeah. a yeah. it's a different type of space. It's something that just is not spoken about or seen. And the mm. fact that you're 24, so you've literally done this at a very young age, came into a space that was like the regulated space i'd imagine to a lot of people that would scare the shit out of them because mm -hmm. it's something that's like very different learning from, something new yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah. so like i guess the how of how that's like obviously you're working like 80 hour weeks mm -hmm. but like how did you actually learn it to then run it to then scale it and hire and train and that sort of um shit? to be fair it was e-learning isn't like a well-situated overly well-run <laughs> industry hmm. right there's so many different forms and it can be very lazy and it was previously. That's what I took on. It was a very lazy setup. It was very much like, oh, you've paid his course off you go. That's the only interaction you had. Yep. And that's what we did do for the beginning. And I thought, this is shit. <laughs> like, yep. I wouldn't pay for this. So how can I expect anyone else to? Mm. I have a high standard, but like, that was, yeah, that was awful. Mm. I, remember thinking, I remember saying, I was like, this is not what we want to give. This yep. is not it. So ended up basically like stripping it back and thinking, if I looked at it from a consumer point of view, 
yeah. as well as someone that works in the industry, as well as someone that owns and takes money out of the industry, where is the medium? What's the middle yeah. ground? Um, now learning that industry, because it was so basic to begin with, there wasn't actually much to learn. Mm. It was jumping through the hoops of the partners and regulatory bodies. Yeah, fine, that's just the administration of the task and the thing itself. But it was actually right, how can I, because it's still very fresh, make it my own? Yeah. How do I want to control it? Mm. Um, the ongoing joke with the couple of people that know what I'm doing is like I almost have like control of the industry because I will create aspects within our delivery that are then taken on by the frameworks and they expect it from other providers. Mm. I've done consulting for the CMI, which is the Chartered Management Institute, in their quality assurance aspect yeah. and put rules in place, not directly from me, but I've said to them, you should put these rules in place. Yeah. They've then applied back on me, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. I've got that much of influence there, mm. which is really cool. But that's come because I've got into the industry at the right time, put bluntly. Yeah. But at the same time, I had this conversation with a good mate of mine who's wanted to do something along the lines entrepreneurially for a long time. He's never done it, but he's always said to me like, I can't think of anything. There's like, everything's already done. Yes, probably. There's, yeah. you know, 7 billion of us on the planet. Everything probably will have been thought of at least once, yeah. but it's taking it out. So we spoke about it earlier. It's deviating from the norm of how it's done, yeah. adapting into a different manner. You're going to get something that works. It's like why Amazon was so, so successful to begin with, because it took a bookstore online. Yeah. That's the only change it made. And then it adapted as it went and diversified effectively, yeah. which is something we'll touch on later. But simply taking something and thinking, how would I make it the best from every aspect to make mm -hmm. it a winning product that benefits all was crucial. And it's mm -hmm. how it got us to where we are today. And I've applied that mentality when we've changed across all the different subtopics of what we yep. do. Which I fucking love, mate, because it's like, I remember I had this conversation not too long ago recently with, um, when we've done it with Reese and Jack, who we've, mm -hmm. we've touched on a couple of times, um, the, the team at YNL, and we took one of our, like Jack and Reese's old, like one of the friends we went to school with. Yep. Um, and I said that like the the hospitality side of things, I feel like is a space that lacks in like true high levels of hospitality, yeah. like restaurants especially. Um, and I said like, I, I 100% in the future, I'm going to own a restaurant, probably a steak restaurant. I fucking love steak, <laughs> mate. I'd probably love a steak restaurant. Um, and one of the, the lads we were, with, uh, we were with, he was like, oh, that's so saturated, man. And I'm like, but that's exactly why I'd want to do it. That's the perfect thing to go into. Yeah. Saturated markets, like people look at, oh, that's too saturated, too saturated. That's a good thing yeah. because it means it works mm -hmm. for a start. If there's a, that much interest in it, yep. there's going to be a lot of stuff going on in it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But it's you look at them, they tend to be like, you can look at like, I shouldn't label a whole industry, but I look at PTs. Mm -hmm. The content's the same. The product's the same. Yep. The promise is the same. There's nothing, like what now makes you go for one over the other is what makes them different. Yep. It's how they deviate from the norm. It's like, you want to open a, a steak restaurant, amazing, do it. But how are you going to do it differently? Yep. How are you going to beat the current model? How are you going to adapt it to win? You know, it's like you might just yep. decide to only do Wagyu. Yep. And you do a million different takes on it and it's not just getting a fucking eight ounce ribeye down the road. Like, yep. pff, that's boring. Someone mm. goes, oh, they do loads of different types of wagyu and loads of different sauces. Oh, that's different. I'm going to yeah. go there instead. It's yeah. that same sort of take. I took Ria out, my missus, to uh, like a burger place on Friday. And we went there solely because it's a smokehouse. Mm. Smoked burgers, not grilled. That's class. And it was rammed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's different. But it's yeah. the same product, effectively, just yeah. slightly adapted. Yeah. That's how I would always, if I do anything from now on, which I will, there's so many other things I want to do, it's just doing it differently. Yeah. It's just doing it differently. But also when you get into industry, you also recognize that a lot of them are the same yep. because it's easier to do that than to be different and yep. try, it's scary to try something new. Yep. Everyone's scared of change, everyone's scared to do something new. Yep. So taking something that works and potentially adapting it, you yep. can fail. That's also fine because yep. you learn what didn't work. So how you can try differently next time and take the yep. path. But people are too scared to make that jump. It's like, don't break what already works. Yep. I disagree with that statement, but mm. that's, you know, the society's mentality, isn't it? Where did you develop, like, the confidence to be willing to break the things that are previously working and go into it? Um, probably overly high expectations of myself. Mm. Like, getting there and then being like, what more? Yeah. <laughs> being greedy, probably. It's like, one thing that always interests me is, like, humans, we're the only species that actually has greed. Mm. There's no other, like, everything else, every other species does it based off necessary for survival we do it because there's a want there's like an entitlement uh and me just like everyone else on this planet like you can't see or not we're all open to that if you yeah. see something you want it you can't help that mm. but there's nothing wrong with that as well as long yeah. as you control it in moderation so going into something and seeing i've achieved this mm. like 
we're the second largest provider in the UK. We're going to be first. Yeah. That is my promise to myself because mm. we deserve that as much as we want it. Makes mm. sense? So again, going into anything and looking at it and thinking, well, it's here. Well, why can't it be here? Why can't it be there? Mm. Instead of then thinking like I said to you today, I go through the whys and I go, well, what am I going to do to get there instead and make actionable steps to get there? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I completely agree. I guess it's like, I know for a fact to be a lot of young entrepreneurs out there, I've definitely spoken to Hamza, one of our last episodes that, that went live. And um, one of the things that he we spoke a lot about is that like, he's a performance coach, works a lot with athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things he touched on was that he's, he's this willingness to explore new ways to get better results in a shorter time frame. Yeah. And the question I asked him was like, how did you gain the confidence to be able to take this to professional athletes and do it? And one of the things he said, which I loved, was that confidence is gained through exploration. And it's like through exploring things and exploring different avenues yep. and getting the feedback that you need. So, for example, for me, I said to you, like, this is the first time in two or three years I've been able to bench, uh, dumbbell bench press for like over 30 kilograms with my shoulder, feeling like it's going to fucking be obliterated. <laughs> um, that came through one simple piece of feedback from Hamza in regards to as you're dumbbell pressing down, rotate your hands in and then back up and straight yeah. and just see how it feels. Done yeah. it, mate. Not had a yeah. fucking problem since. Yep. And I, what I was trying to convey to him was like, how can we, how can we um, relay to the audience like how to gain that level of confidence to be willing to yeah. fucking look change in the face and do it anyways? Yeah, well, show yourself change. That's it. Change. Change is so scary. Mm. It's society does not like change. People yep. don't like change. Like everyone likes to do the same thing. Mm. Like you saw, like again, if I jump it back when COVID hit, the idea of not being able to go out. Everyone was like, fuck that, I don't want to do that, I don't like this, I don't want that. It was complaints, complaints, complaints. Now, whether or not the ethics that were correct or not is a different subject, but people don't like change. They don't like to be have to deviate from the norm. Mm. All right? I, I stand on that. Um, ultimately, like with you, you bench press, you're open to change, you're open to trying something new. Yep. It could have hurt a fuck time more. You mm. could have found that really blew your shoulder out, yep. but it didn't have the opposite. Okay. If you sat there and what if it goes wrong and you don't do it, well, you don't lose anything, but you don't gain anything as well. Yeah. Now, going ahead and attempting the adaptation, you did gain something. And I guess yeah. the pain as well was yeah, so yeah. strong prior that yeah. it was like, I'm willing to try other pain things. Pain point, yeah, exactly, yeah. has forced that. But like, for me, being stuck and set at one point is a yeah. pain point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, that's why would you want to do the same thing every day? Mm. That's not the point of exact. Like, if we have one life, right? You're telling me you're going to do the same thing every day on repeat. If it makes you happy, you do you, but that ain't me. Sorry, there's so much out there to do, so many things I want to achieve and see and experience. I will do whatever I need to to get there. As long as I'm not hurting anyone else or myself, I'll do whatever I need to do to get there. Mm. You know? A lot of people lack that, but a lot of people at the same time lack that because they are scared of change. And it's Mm. this big, vicious cycle of, I want this, oh, but I don't want to potentially risk this to get there oh, I, I should be happy where I'm at. I'm going to stay here. Oh, I want this. And it's a big cycle of just, you know, I want a letdown and background, if that makes sense. You see it every day. <laughs> I've heard that so many times. You see it every <laughs> day. It's, it's incredible. It's like part of, um. it's why I started like with wanting to do my coaching thing yep. is because so many people commit to 100% into something just to maintain it yep. and then wonder why they burn out. Hmm. It's because you're getting no tangible results that are worth the effort hmm. because you're not pushing where the energy should be best placed it's like you have a finite amount of energy throughout the day throughout your life really there's only so much you can give do it into things that are going to benefit you equally yep. yeah linear progression across the board if i focus all my time into work like i did eight hours into a week i lost my relationship what was it that? i lost my relationship right i put on a shit ton of weight uh my relationship with my family deteriorated relationship with my mates deteriorated but i had a fat bank account at the end of it is that worth it? Mm. That's where it's working out what is right. I made a change effectively, but I sacrificed a load of things to achieve that change because I wanted the bank account. Mm. Now I look at it and think, well, I could have actually achieved that, but I could have maintained these things as well. Mm. I put 100% of my energy into that, wondered why everything else crashed. Yep. It's like everything in life, if you think of like all your pillars, they're all like gauges. It's a matter, I think um, you mentioned to me before, I think potentially Stephen Bartlett said, he's got like an analogy of buckets yep. and you like top up all the buckets mm. continuously. That's the same thing with gauges, it's keeping them in the green. Yep. don't redline something to let everything else drop mm-hmm. off effectively that's what I want to go into coaching is it's a mentality it's like a philosophy now but um, 
I put down a lot of where I'm at and the healthy level of my life and how I'm able to manage things to that touching of everything, growing it all together, making small changes and adaptations when necessary to advance them to where I want them to be. Yeah. Less so. Balls to the walls on one aspect, potentially fucking it up, but in the process of ruining everything else because I'm not bothering with any of it. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. I guess it's like, there's going to be so many people maybe that can relate heavily to the flatlining of one said mm -hmm. element. Um, I think anyone that goes into like entrepreneurship even myself, mate, like when I first went into like the streaming world, it was like 250 days in a row, five to 10 hours a day, majority, the first five months, 10 hours plus per day, nobody yep. seen me. Bex was, Bex, my mum were the only people who see me and Bex would come over, lay on my bed while I streamed. And that's all she, she wouldn't even, we wouldn't even be doing it together. I'd just be streaming and she'd be laying on bed mm. watching TV or something or working on stuff. Um, and it's like, Everything else did deteriorate, but I was I was willing to give up that cost at the time. And I realised that a lot of the stuff that deteriorated wasn't actually things that I yeah. wanted, anyways. Like friendships that just deteriorated naturally and stuff like that. Because I know you outgrew a lot of your friends as well. I guess the thing I'm bringing it back to is like people experience that to begin with, and obviously it feels shit to begin with. And then time passes, and it's like I wouldn't have changed anything then, but as time goes on and I want to progress further, I want to be able to balance those things out. Yep. I want to make sure that I'm still going gym. I want to mm. make sure my relationships are thriving. And I also want to make sure that my fucking business is f flying forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, how yep. do I, how, yeah. like, how would I balance that? I mean, that, that attitude of like balls to the walls exposes everything else effectively because mm. you're, it's like you're not shielding it anymore yep. with your energy. So, like, you're right. I mean, a lot of the friendships I lost, I'm not sad about that. The relationship yep. I lost, I'm not sad about that because they weren't there to understand what I was doing. All yep. the things that I have saved and kept from doing like eight hour weeks and giving all my time and all my weekends to something that no one else really understood, they all came back to me because they meant something. So it was a try test and trial at the same time. So it's, you know, it can have its pros from doing things like that. But at the same time, if you know, and it's where you should be, in my opinion, everyone should know the things they value, mm -hmm. the things that give them just as much as, you know, take from them, if that makes sense. There should be a 50 50 balance. It's a principal yep. relationship, right? So, in all these different aspects of life, you should be giving just as much you take and you need to know where you're at within that. Therefore, when you do expose yourself and you give maybe a bit too much, you know that you're fucking up because mm. you're not feeling you're getting anything from them anymore. Yep. Like you're not giving, you're aware of that. It's like being aware of the balance needed for all of them. Like I didn't know I was coming or going in a lot of my relationships like when I was like 21. Mm. I was in the same friendship group that I was in because we all got lumped together in the same math set in like year seven and we yeah. stayed together for five years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like now I look back and I go, I didn't give any effort to any of them, but they didn't give any effort to me. Mm. I've maintained one out of seven of those mates yeah. now. And it's like, but I'm not upset about that because it's shown me that I didn't give the energy. I was giving energy previously to something that didn't give anything back. Mm. So I've learned from that. But that was a change that happened because I put so much time into this. Yep. That made sense. And again, change is not a negative thing. Mm. I'm now, from going back into things I care about, which is like my fitness and CrossFit, uh, business with you guys, as well as obviously different aspects like my hobbies and things like that. My network now, my friends, the level of value is incredible. Yep. Like the amount I receive and the amount I feel happy to yep. give is it far outweighs anything I've ever had before. Mm. I love every single one of the people I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep. I have so much time from so much energy and I'd, I will fly to Scotland to be on a podcast with one of them. Do you see my point? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's that sort of mentality. Whereas before, I didn't really understand the dynamics. I didn't know if mm. I was coming or going. And it took doing something where I threw myself, you know, head first, yep. commit to something for that to be exposed and shown. I love that, mate. I like the way that you explained it because I think even just you saying everyone knows what they value you instantly made me reflect on what I valued then and what I value now yeah. and how fucking wildly different that is. Yeah. Like, so yeah. like those friendships, those people, those things that I was doing, the pain of all of those things and not doing anything with my life far outweighed the, like I was getting no value from those things. I was only getting pain, which mm. then made me want to flatline in business mm. to then get out, thinking that's the solution to getting yeah. out of it. Yeah when I think like it ended up being the solution, but it wasn't the solution I thought it was going to be. I yeah, got the yeah. friends, I got the amazing relationship, started like gym, other things, started to find other things that I valued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where like you, the way you explained that's outstanding, mate, because yeah. it's, as time goes on, people start to realize once they've, if they end up, they flatlined the business right at the very beginning, mm -hmm. 
and then they've got somewhere like you said they're starting to make a good bit of money they start to realize there's other things that they really value yeah, and want to do yeah, yeah i mean you'll also the things you value when you go into if you throw yourself head first into something if you know what you value you'll recognize that you're undervaluing them mm. you're not giving them the energy they require yep. i didn't i mean maybe due to immaturity of my age but i feel like i've almost had frontal lobe development since about 12 years old so i remember being that and being aware like i haven't spoken to my boys in ages and being like well they haven't spoke to them. i haven't spoken to them but they haven't spoke to me yeah i was like hmm all right and i noticed fragments in my relationship and like weird aspects and how i was being treated by my own family because of how I what I was doing and I was recognizing actually I'm not fussed by that I'm not stressed by that because I'm looking at it and thinking it's just opening up to me the disparity in the levels of energy that were given to those relationships and those different things I value <laughs> because I was valuing them for the wrong reasons like I was with my friends I was with them for the wrong reasons still mm. there was no mutual interest apart from the fact that we'd known each other it was just comfort Yep. right and it's like you know the better the devil you know than when you don't so you'd rather stay in something uncomfortable for the sake of sorry something that's not beneficial for the sake of comfort yep. than to take yourself out of the comfort zone and get something that's even better right mm. same my relationship same with some of my family relationships yep. right the dynamics were all wrong because i just valued them for the wrong reasons and i was exposed again by going head first into something mm. else i guess for someone like sitting in that limbo just now what would be your advice to them um, don't be scared to fully analyze and strip back every single thing you perceive to value in your life. Mm -hmm. Look at it from your own perspective of what you give, yeah. compare that to what you take, and then look at it from an outside perspective. What would you tell someone you care about in that position to do about that situation? Mm -hmm. The amount of time, it's so much easier. If you say to me, Ben, I'm having this issue, I can sit here with a non-biased mentality and go, no, I think that's okay, or fuck that off. It's mm -hmm. stupid. Yeah. Whereas when you're emotionally attached to it, it's very hard to do that, to detach. Mm. It's like a, a couple of friends of mine have gone through breakups recently. And it's like from an outside perspective, I try, always try my hardest to be rational, unemotional and have no bias. But sometimes when it's that bad, I'm like, listen, the fact it's getting me annoyed should be enough of a sign for you to realize it's that shit. Yeah. But because they're attached to it, I said that quote, you know, it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Someone would rather sit in an unhealthy relationship than jump out of their comfort zone which mm -hmm. is the unhealthy relationship sadly to try something new for yeah. fear of change again revolving back to being alone all these things mm -hmm. honestly my piece of advice is just to give it a fucking go mm -hmm. <laughs> strip it back and actually see where the value is in it yeah and i guess like for you like making like all of those shifts yourself obviously it's led to you now also going to speak about the diversification side of things um at some sure. point but there is you took the leap in all these different aspects and i remember we at the last quarter one strategy day you were the only person in the room to score personal and business life 10 out of 10 and do you feel like all the things that you're touching on just now is what has played a role in both of those things oh, 100%. that yeah. mentality i made a shift in probably about january february time yeah um 10 out of 10 obviously is as good as it could be yeah. right five is bang on average one is like it's the worst it's ever been 10 out of 10 because i've never seen so much improvement and mental oh sorry not mental like internal fulfillment in my entire life yeah and that's across friendships relationships professional life and personal life all of it has just been mind-blowing the past like quarter mm. four months five months if not but that's because i've made those necessary changes by pushing out the comfort zone being open to it trying new things even if they were quote-unquote failures nothing is technically failure because you learn from them as well it's all meant that for me i'm like just moving it at 10 10 constantly like life feels worth living every day mm. which is amazing like to wake up every morning and be excited for the day even though it could be a day of just sitting doing an invoice like all day long that's fine to me because it's something i value because it's going to help me to achieve x which is something i want while also mm. having all these aspects of my life which are amazing and high value yeah. like it's you know not to you know i don't want to be arrogant or anything like that but it's like i'm very happy with the life i lead i could have no money in my bank account i'd be so happy with it because i have the healthiest relationships possible with the things i value mm. that is so key so key instead of having one thing I flogged to death and identify as yeah. while everything else suffers that's built on a foundation that's weak mm. if that makes sense yeah i guess it's like got me thinking as well from an aspect of people maybe sitting there just now feeling like i don't feel that way i don't wake up every morning and feel fucking buzzed at the thought process of moving forward mm -hmm. when i think about the times where i have had the biggest like being at that 10 10 like environment 
it's because I'm so clear on the vision, the things I value, yeah. the people I'm around. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's weird because somebody used to ask me, how how did you get there? I wouldn't even know necessarily what to say or yeah. like how that should be possible. What would be your thoughts if someone was to ask your um, question? If you want that way? It's very difficult to, like society tries to have you break everything down into compartments. It's very difficult to get your subconscious to do that. Consciously, we can all do it. Like right yep. now, I'm in a podcast of you. It doesn't matter what's happening on the street outside, what's happening at home, what Mrs. is up to. It doesn't matter. But my subconscious can't tell the difference. So, and my emotions can't tell the difference. So you need to build a basis of all the things that your subconscious values in life, have healthy relationships with them, feel confident in them, to then feel confident in life itself. Mm. Because they're all pillars, right? Yep. You have a weak foundation, you can't stand up on it. You can't reach higher, you can't continue to climb, it's all gonna collapse underneath you. So having a solid foundation of the things that you care for, that's the priority. Having those means you can build off that and go higher. Look at what you've got going on, strip it back and go again. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I guess it's like, for me, I always used to wonder how like people that were millionaires, billionaires, whatever it was, yeah. would be like on a yacht for like three months. And then they would, mm. through the clarity they'd gain, through just doing something peaceful or what they want to enjoy or spending time with the people that they want to spend time with, they would gain so much clarity on one decision, pull that lever, and then boom, all this fucking money would come out yep. and their business would scale. Yep. And it's like, yep. I never ever understood that. But now as time goes on, I truly understand how that's even fucking possible. Mm. Like how those things even happen. Because when you're, see that zero, zero to 10K per month mark? You're so deep in the fucking trenches, mate. You're yes. doing everything yes. yourself. Yep. You couldn't even fathom, how could I go on holiday for a few days? Never mind a few months. Or never mind a few weeks. Yeah. Like, how is that even possible? Yeah, I mean, like, you, you said that at zero to 10. It's like, I'll stress again, the the money the business was making when I took over stops the moment the old manager left, the old owner left, because they yep. did all the work. So I came in, filled those shoes, and it was like, what can I... Because it, it's something like starting from fresh. I was like, I need to maintain what they were doing I need to figure out how to do that because there was no pass handover. Mm. She was like, oh, I'm fucking off. I'm like, oh, sick. <laughs> um, it was very much learning how to do it quickly, going through that. It's like that eight hour weeks because it was like zero to 10, we got there. But the, the effort it took to get to that 10 was like mind boggling. Yep. And now it's like, because we are, we are, we've learned what we've learned and we've scaled to where we've scaled, that 10 is like, that's Wednesday start kids. Yep. <laughs> you know, that's, but that's how things scale and move. But I get it 100%, like being in those trenches is an awful place to be, but it's so necessary. Mm -hmm. And again, that carries across to everything in life. You have to start from zero with everything, yep. every relationship. Like you mentioned the millionaires, billionaires, they've got there by having a solid foundation, yep. you know, by having a system that backs them as much as they back mm -hmm. to have support. Like when you feel solid in something, when you feel confident in something, if you back yourself to the hill, yep. your confidence is going to be rife and you're going to perform your best. Mm. So you need to be like that across the board if you want to succeed generally in life. Yep. Yeah, you look at these millionaires, billionaires, they're not, you know, they're not people that don't have other qualities to them. They tend to be very high valuable and quality people mm. that have foundations, that have well-structured lives, good valuable things within them, healthy relationships. They're not just people that sit in corners all day or do the same thing every day. Yeah, You know, they've got value to them across the board. Mm. And I guess like what I, it's probably a good time to like segue into you're starting almost like a new venture, which is Diversifier, um, which is basically like teaching people how to build, the, like there's so many different yeah. arms to it, but building those yep. foundations <laughs> is gonna be a part of it. The idea came from that initially um, for brand diversification. Mm. So one thing within the, my, my company's technical Maxdag Group, it's got five different trading names. Initially when I bought it out, it was Sussex Business School. Yep. which was just one aspect. And I discovered very quickly that through anxiety, if I lose that, I lose everything. Yep. If I stop making sales, it all goes down the toilet. If I get sanctioned by a regulating body and I'm told I can't register students, money gone. That's it, my income. Gone, everything I've worked for, gone. Can't do anything about it because regulated, I can't control that factor. So I thought, what can I do within this aspect then to almost, you know, seven all my eggs in one basket, spread it out. We started... Uh, Debs, which is IV and tutor solutions for other providers. Eli, our own recognizing and qualification pathway for delivery in e-learning e as a space. Um, MLCM, which is coaching and mentoring post-completion of qualifications. And now as a recent Prevelop, which is basically doing e-learning consulting for large-scale corporations who have in-house 
uh, CPD. So we write, implement a credit, deliver their entire frameworks for them. So we do lots of things, yeah. <laughs> but very bluntly. That's brand diversification. It's taking you know what is previously one sort of mode of service yep. and leveraging it through different issues, different holes, different, you know, what do we spend money on within our industry that we could actually make money off for other people, which yep. was IV coaching, mentoring, quality standardization, yep. stuff like that. Now that's brand diversification. If one of those fails, doesn't matter because all the other ones still generate money. They're mm. all separate from each other under the same name because yep. they all technically service the same industry and they're all doing sort of the same thing. So everything is cross-relatable. So I will go through and oversee IV for our provision and then go oversee IV allocations for all the other people we provide for through the other namesake. Yep. That is what I call you know brand leverage and diversification. Mm. That's what I wanted to offer because yep. I realized, hang on a minute, there's like talking to YNL, all the lads in there, and the girls, I should say, they've all got these brilliant businesses, these brilliant models, and they're very, very narrow, yeah. very narrow, very deep, but very narrow. And I obviously spoke to a couple like Daniel, for example, about going into like course writing, education, things like that, because I said, you know, leverage what you've got, expand it into other avenues. You spend so much time doing the service, why not build a passive entry through something else to generate more income off your knowledge already? Mm. You spent five plus years doing something, you're gonna have an understanding of the entire industry or yep. at least close to. So look at the issues. How can you fill those gaps now that you know? How can you leverage what you've done to fill that? The aim was to do consulting off that. Yep. I then found after doing like the first two group sessions with the Immortals, um, and you, it was I've never had validation, if that makes sense, for what I'm capable of, yep. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I Technically, I've always been at the top in this company because I've been the owner and I've just, everyone's coming underneath me. So no one's ever validated what I'm doing. Mm. Now, it wasn't until probably I met you, Jack, and the others in YNL that I got validation and actually realized what I'm doing is what I'm doing. Does that make mm. sense? I was always close money because no one ever got it. Like my past relationship, she couldn't even, I was with her for five years. She didn't have a clue what I did. Yep. She, if I said to her, what do I do for a living? And she couldn't say it. She'd just laugh and go, oh, something computers. I'm like, Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the love. Um, but now it's like, after doing those group calls and talking to the boys and having those like money people, I got validation for what not only I do as a business, but also the value I bring. Mm. So we're having a chat with a couple of lads and talking about some of their issues with them. And I, th I remember coming out of that first call of the driest throat known to man, because all I've done is talk. Yeah. All I've done is talk. I remember getting off the call and thinking, oh, fuck me, I've just chat so much shit <laughs> for like two and a half hours. I remember you mess your shit off, you're like, just want to know like, the value you've just brought is incredible. Yep. So good, I've had three of the lads mess with you for one-to-one, -one, stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I actually have a lot to give. Mm. And that's only been more and more built upon every time I've spoke to someone. Yep. Like talking to Lawrence, talking to Daniel, like the things they put in the chat, stuff like that. I've got worth to give mm. and I'm benefiting people. Yep. So it went from potentially just doing brand diversification to actually professional and personal diversification. Mm -hmm. Now those two in their own, they're separate but very similar. The whole way I look at it is like, if I go into an organization and they want diversification within their subset, first of all, I've got to look at, is their team capable of it in their professional skills? So professional diversification, looking at your skill. If you're a graphic designer, you do graphic design. Okay, have you considered animation, 4D modeling, rendering, even going through to digital arts and things like that, like illustration, have mm -hmm. you considered these different sub modes of your actual skill? Yeah. Develop, it's like CPD, right? Mm -hmm. So again, going into professional consulting, um, sorry, diversification consulting. Do the professional team have the diversification to support the company diversification? First of all, do the individuals that need the professional diversification have the, enough personal diversification mm. to support those changes? And it revolves right back to the basis of what we've been talking about today. Having a solid enough foundation where they're diverse across all the things and aspects in their life, balanced and high valued to support changes within different niches of their lives. Yep. We obviously chatting to Daniel, we had about two calls talk about these things. We sat on the call for ages. And then in third call, called him up. He was like, yeah, I broke up my missus. I'm like, okay, we all good? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I just talk with you and everything. I just realized it's not right. It's not right. I've been hanging on to something that isn't necessary. And he said, it's enabled me to do this and do this and do this and do this. And I realized now I've been hanging on to loads of things within business and non-business that are irrelevant and only holding me down. And like you said, he's, I remember him saying to me, he was like, like you said about the foundation metaphor, yep. I had a weak foundation because I was clinging to things yep. that were unhealthy to me. Mm -hmm. And in actual fact now, I can just leverage off them and build 
to be stronger. Mm. And I was like, that's exactly it. He yeah. sorted his personal investigation to be healthier, to be happier. Yeah. And then he can go professionally, then build up his business a bit mm. more. And it's like that, you're providing the foundation for growth across the board. Yeah. That makes 100%, sense. Man. Yeah, so those three subsettings is things I want to go into doing. So yeah. consulting a business, uh, coaching and mentoring for the other two, but it's basically mm. like almost a supporting role with a bit of an education pathway and how to achieve balance, so to speak, mm. and diversification across your life, pretty much. And how are you planning on teaching people this stuff? So, um, I don't have much time. <laughs> That's why we're here on a Sunday. Um, I don't have much time, but it's a matter of, I'd like to do um, coaching if possible, but also in an education sort of method, if that makes sense. So online course, ironic as well. That's already that's what I already do. But I'm aware that people want to talk and gain value. Like I have value to give, so I'll do that. But I think there's a lot to be learned from a lot of people who can read and learn but I don't want to be specific to just that. So it'll be in content forms as well as social media, uh, e-learning specifically online through like LearnDash and things like that, but going through coaching and mentoring as well on one-to-one -one basis. Amazing, mate. Fucking love it. That's the plan. Um, yeah, I think people, I mean, how, how, how far are we in? Like 45 minutes mm -hmm. to like 50 minutes. I'm pretty sure people can already feel the type of value that you can provide, mate, and yeah. how much people can learn from <laughs> you. Because I think, I said it to you before we came on, man, like I think there's going to be a lot of people listening to this that's going to be like, I want to consume more of what you bring to the table and I think the thing that I've been most um, that I admire mostly about yourself is that these philosophies these things that you're building up at the age of 24 albeit you don't look 24 <laughs> which I was fucking about uh, <laughs> you don't look 24 I remember telling Jack that on my discovery call and he was like fuck off man. <laughs> yeah I'm 24 <laughs> yeah I think not only how you look, but I think it also comes down to like the conviction you've got behind what you put forward. Mm -hmm. You believe very much in what yeah. it is. Yeah, to be dead honest, I spent probably the first 23 years of my life caring way too much what everyone else thought. Mm. I'd be scared to like get less than like 50 likes on Instagram. That sort of vibe, yeah. like very vain, very over aware of what everyone else thought. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, why should other? Why should my fear of other people's opinions get in the way of me doing what I want to do? Yep. So fuck that, I'm just gonna do it, mm. but very bluntly. Yeah. So I will post whatever I want. I will share whatever I want. I will say whatever I want. I will do whatever I want because I know what I'm doing is in my best interest for others. Yep. If you don't like that, you don't have to pay attention. There's 7 billion people on this planet. One person's probably gonna like what I'm doing. Yep. If it's not you, I don't care, yep. <laughs> put bluntly. Go go look at someone else, it's not for you, that's fine. I no? think, just I love what you said in regards to, you've got pure intentions. So like, why would you ever defer away from like exactly. showcasing them and like yeah. doing it? And those those intentions don't have to be validated by anyone but myself mm. because they're for me. Yeah, a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah, do things for yourself, not for others. But it's, yep. you know, Instagram, society, social media makes it seem like you should do it for others. Yeah, for, you know, clout chasing effectively. Yep. But when you realise that that is worthless mm. and you can achieve things giving you internal gratification without needing anyone else to say anything yep. you're onto a fucking winner onto yep. a winner and i think as well see when you're able to say like my intentions were pure my like i done that with say like for example there's a there's a disagreement of some sort and it's like you knowing that you did have their best interests at heart yeah and albeit it maybe didn't come across the way that you wanted it to or maybe there's like some sort of disagreement at play so many people will do something with pure super pure intentions i've seen it a lot with like members that will come through yl and it's like the previous experience at different networks at different groups has then resulted in you know fucking some some horrible arguments or mm. things that come up right and it and then as a result of that see that those pure intentions they will start to almost like suppress themselves as individuals they'll yeah. start to suppress yeah. who they really are they'll start to not do really nice things for other people they'll start to always feel like oh if i do that nice thing this other bad thing's just going to happen all the time and it's like see when you fucking do amazing things for the right people man mm -hmm. holy shit bro yeah. it's like this never ending given spectrum that yeah. just it's just a circle of positive energy yeah that's all it is i mean there are an unfortunate amount of people out there that like to take more than they give yeah that's okay because there's two sides to that Ideally, people aren't like that, but they are. But yep. for someone that is un on the receiving end of that in a negative fashion, it's understanding that that's okay. It just is a learning path that I don't want to deal with that person again, or I don't want to be in that environment again, or I am aware of what to look out for next time. It's not a matter of kicking off. Like everything everything that comes in in life, like I view the world as gray, 
and I apply a black or white mentality to everything that comes in because I'm in control of how I respond to everything. Yep. If I come and do this podcast with you and you decide to not post it, I'm not going to get upset. Mm. I'm not going to get upset because at the end of the day, I don't know why you've chosen to do that and I don't care because it's your choice. I can't change that, mm. right? If I decide to kick off and get annoyed, it's going to cause a negative response. You might get a bit upset about or feel risky about feeling like you feel obliged to then post a podcast yeah. or to not upset people. Does that make sense? Things like that. It's it's not worth it, but that's based off a of miscommunication as well anyway yeah. and a misagreement in what's actually going on. I think so much of that comes down to like, see the communication piece, man. I think I realised that when I started working with Andy, one of the sound, solid foundations of our relationship has been over communicating. Yeah. Albeit we didn't even know we were over communicating. It wasn't until Lawrence came in as an advisor and was like, oh, see up. the way you are. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the way you are communicating is mm. fucking immense for staying on the same page. Yeah. If you ever disagree on something, it doesn't go on for longer than a day. You yeah. speak about it there and then. It's dealt with. There's never, like, it never drags on in any way, shape, mm. or form. And I think the communication side of things. Like, see if someone genuinely does have pure intentions. Like, it, being in a relationship or having a friendship with someone that also has pure intentions, you will look to get to a, like, a fucking, like, being clear on that. You'll get yeah. to a stage where you're able to understand that you both have pure intentions. Yeah. It was just a miscommunication. Let's fucking move forward from here. Mm -hmm. Whereas, see, when you have super pure intentions, you do something for somebody else, they don't have pure intentions, they make you feel like shit for what you've done, yeah. they take it the wrong way, yeah. and then it just comes back to you just feeling like absolute shit. Yeah. Miscommunication is such a common issue, mm. like in professional and personal relationships. Yeah. Like, I'll go through miscommunication with someone over the phone at work, through emails, in a dispute with my missus, whatever it may be, with mates, with my family. It's, it's rife, it's all the time but it's how you choose to go about amending it or maybe not even yep. amending it, correcting it. Yep. Like if it's, um, you know, Rina, for example, if we get into a tiff over a message, we go, we'll talk about it over the phone yep. because we're not about to send a message to each other that gets misinterpreted and it causes each of either of us more yep. emotional damage than it's worth. Mm. So we'll talk on the phone. Yep. It's, a, but both parties have to be aware of that, if yep. that makes sense. And when you are aware of that, you appreciate that most issues are actually down to miscommunication. There was never any issue in the first place. It was yep. just miscommunication. 100%, man. 100%. I think uh, one of the things that I did want to touch on today was obviously we've kind of unraveled how the Max Dad like, group as a whole yep. was created, how you went from buying the company when it was doing 9, 10K mm. per month to also what it's doing just now. When it comes to unraveling that journey it's something that people can take value from and apply very much so but sometimes it can feel hard to extract the exact areas because it's right at the you're you went from eight nine k down to zero back up to 100k yeah. and you're trying to distill all the pieces that were actual key determinators yep. with diversify you are starting from scratch from now mm -hmm. so what is your plan to get it to and where do you want to get it to essentially what i see for this so with with Max as it is, it exists and it's it was almost I shouldn't say I've touched wood, it's like foolproof, right? Mm. Because it's it's diverse, it's situated, and everything has its own running order. I oversee it now, I don't specifically do it, if that yep. makes sense anymore. As I said to you, like when I initially came in, my aim is to almost diversify my own portfolio. Yep. So I've worked in e learning mm. and no other situation. I'd like to consult in other aspects through diversification consulting, and I'd like to look at getting into other business ventures through investment formats or actually putting my capital into new startups, things like that, whatever yeah. it may be. Now, with Diversify, specifically, if we look at that as a new entity, I definitely want to look at getting that to something that's like, that's my income. Mm. That's my income. Everything else I, that comes from the other things I do, wonderful dividends, whatever it may be, but my income is taken from coaching, mentoring, the education, the support of individuals through Diversify. That's what I'd love to do. Mm. Um, now, getting that to where it needs to be, I can, and I will stress enough, leveraging a network and the people you know there's nothing wrong with that. There's no issues and harm in asking questions or asking for opportunities. Do it. But on top of that, staying consistent in everything you do do. Yeah. Um, I can't stress that enough. Like we were talking about, obviously, podcasting. Like, well, Mosey's done like, what, six years? Yep. Took him six years to get to the top 10. And it wasn't a matter of him aiming to get there. It was a byproduct of him being consistent and doing it every day. Yeah. So like, I've obviously, with content plans, with everything I want to do for the delivery and the marketing aspect, I will just continuously do it until I get to a point where I'm happy. Now, knowing me, I don't know where that is, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but there's there's milestones to be had. There's signing the first client. Yep. There's having X amount months. Mm. There's having meetups potentially. There's 
having 12 months in trading. There's all these goals. Those are the reasons where I'll, that I'll do it for. Yep. Not so much as having a picture at the end goal. Yeah, I'd like to earn all the money off it, but money is an amount. It, it's tangible, it doesn't exist, yep. right? So it's for me, it's like tick the milestones, mm. have the achievements, aim for them and keep moving and continue to give value. Yep. That's what will keep me going, so to speak. Like, <laughs> And also making sure it's fulfilling for me to do. Yeah. And what are you going to do to get to that like first client? Uh, jump in the YNL group chat and ask for one No. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you, that will come through. So my plan is to basically attract based off my philosophy. I will not break what I want to give to attract someone. Mm. If it comes through organically, perfect. If I need to go down paid marketing, anything like that, I will do that. But it's a matter of basically flushing out a system and designing a platform that is going to develop and grow and attract individuals organically, not off a matter of, you know, I don't want to be cold calling and emailing. I want yeah. to be putting out content, putting out value that someone yeah. is attracted to that motivates them, much like you guys did to me. Yeah. That's the same sort of relationship development I want, yeah. is finding a pain point, because it is a very common pain point, mm. making it aware that this is a solution to that. If you're open to it, we can start a conversation. Yep. That's I the think mentality. for a majority of people when they start off, the reason I'm asking these questions is because there's be so many people there just now that have they've started and albeit they're going through these milestones mm -hmm. and they've probably achieved, they've got their first, I don't know, 10 clients, mm -hmm. but they have no idea what the fuck happens after that. And yep. Yep. obviously I guess the, the first thing that you've done coming into YNL as a whole, you've had your idea validated. Mm -hmm. You're now getting that offer fully validated from a paying aspect. Yep. And when I say you've had your, your idea validated, you've already helped people. You've already helped Daniel. Mm -hmm. You've already helped other people within the group already. I know from, I mean, what, we've got like nearly 80 entrepreneurs in the group now. I know so many people in the group, mate, struggle with like actually having multiple areas of their life that they're happy with. Yeah, and moving forward. Yeah. yeah, like it's, I know for a fact, and there's so many entrepreneurs out there, when I think about all the content I've got, even just speaking about it just now, I know so many people will benefit from what it is that you're wanting to provide. So yep. that offer being validated, I wouldn't be surprised if the next few weeks, like you already have someone that's paying you or that you- I have three lined up already. Three lined up already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, um, that's not, they're not people I know either. No. That's organic. I mean, one thing I'll stress is obviously with SBS, each start we've done, yep. um, we've run through, I think it's like 13 different ideas. Yep four of which have technically worked, one's an adaptation. Be prepared to fail, but I've done this so many times now as starting something new and having to find the first person mm. that it's almost like second nature, if that yep. makes sense. Like I know for a fact, like the Instagram has one post and four followers. Yep. So it doesn't matter. I'm, yep. I'm still there to give value. I know what I'm worth. It doesn't matter about the, the needing to have that basis sorted. Like Prevelop, which is our new startup. We've had a client before we even have a website or even have an offering. Yep. We technically have a client that's interested and wants to go with balling off word of mouth because yep. we've practiced the methods of approach by knowing the industry well enough. That someone that has 10 clients, you've attracted 10 clients, mm -hmm. right? You might have gone through a thousand potentials to get there, but you still attracted 10. That's 1%, right? Yep. Cool, sorted. Now it's how you leverage that, what you've learned from that into gaining another, another 10 yep. and so on and so forth. Yep. You know, reestablish your understanding of your market, reestablish the understanding of your attitude and your approach mm. to everything good to go keep rolling with it so interesting man because we we think about it from YNL's perspective obviously one of the things for example you've got a chat with with Andy next week mm. notion builds mm. is something that like we never predicted would continue to have so much demand as they do now but we've and I'm one of them <laughs> and we've never marketed it bro like yeah. Andy's done some content for like, a couple of months on Instagram here and there but consistency wise like he's not nailed it like mm. for a long period of time right so we've done like no paid marketing like no like not any consistent market on it either but see just through YNL and people seeing Andy obsession over Notion seeing what he's built for YNL yep. people have just then asked the question they've just said could you do that for me by the way it's Is exactly it? what I did to him as well yeah. <laughs> it's like Daniel Luby was one of the first ones he was just like yeah. do you think you could do that for Ecom? I think if I remember correctly Daniel was talking about his Notion yeah, I said. I think I said to him, I was like, "Fuck me, I need your system where I can see everything on one platform." He was like, "And he did it for me." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." <laughs> Straight at the end, but oi. <laughs> but yeah, that um, again, where you because that's almost like a byproduct. That's something you diversify into, yeah. right? But 
you will recognize that in anything you do, your initial idea will change. Yep. The initial perception and conception of something will adapt over time because most people don't, most people look at it like, oh, I want to do this selfish perspective. Mm -hmm. I want to offer a diversification, coaching, mentoring, consulting. People are interested in that, but maybe not in the format I want to give it in. Yep. Now I have to be open to adaptation. Otherwise, if I stay, like we mentioned earlier, if I stay, if I procrastinate, say the same, don't adapt, I will stagnate and it will all drop off. It will fail. Mm -hmm. You have to roll with the times. You have to. It's why so many people lose their jobs now because they can't keep up. It's, it's a sad reality. It's, you have to be open to adapt to mm -hmm. your client basis. Effectively, any form of, anything that generates income and money is technically because you are providing a service that yep. someone wants. You're giving someone some someone something they want, right? Yep. Um, if you can't do that, you don't get any money. So be prepared. The first 10 clients might like your model. The next 10 might not. Yep. Roll with it. You mentioned obviously with a, a change over, you did a slight change in like your commission model, mm. right? That's perfect. You're adapting as you go. Yep. It needs to be done. You have to be open to change. Again, it's like with Notion, you didn't plan on offering Notion designs and builds to people, yep. but there's an interest. And again, okay, let's look at offering a service in that. Yep. If Danny turned around and went, well, oh, I don't actually want to do that. I'd be there and be like, why not? Yeah. Why don't you want to offer that as a service and a piece of value to your community? Yeah. And you'd get other people do that as well. It's definitely not a problem, bro. <laughs> I, know, I know it's not a problem. Yeah, but if, is, uh, say, for example, if you yeah. weren't open to that, if you weren't keen on that offering, like yeah. that's not what why no is. We're not building systems. Yeah, yeah. We're offering a group mentality, a network. Joe, you know, it's so funny point? though. See, so just like you're saying that though, I'm just, I'm laughing because it's like, and, uh, he's like, and he's like, give me all the builds. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> it. Bro. Of course he is. That is literally it. It's just like, as you said that, I was mm. like, holy shit, imagine, mm. imagine that was the case. Because I think for, for Andy, it's like, the first couple of builds that came through, he was like, just to be clear, I will work evens on these. I will not dip into <sighs> YNL time. I, so I will much. fucking nail them. <laughs> and I was like, Andy, what, what have you started doing the evens now? And he's like, mate, I'll put the TV on. I'll crack my feet, feet up on the little, like, whatever it is, the, He's on a couch essentially. What he'll the, have the fucking the poof. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He'll crack his feet up there. He'll have his dinner and he'll sit with the Mac and he'll just bang these notion builds and he fucking loves it. So yeah, just when you were when saying I, that, I was laughing. I did do a, the fastest time I managed to get him to book in a call means when I said about notion design. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> and um, he, we booked in and he's, he said, I'll send you through uh, like a look through like, yep. uh, later in the week. An hour later, that came yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, and I was literally, yeah. I was driving down to Cornwall. I was like, fuck me. Like, <laughs> how's that come out so quick? <laughs> Proposal, everything within an yeah. hour. I'm like, he's keen. He loves it. Anyone that Listen. wants to try and get a call with Andy that's not in the network, message him about Notion. Just hit his Instagram DMs. Yeah, just yeah. Notion question mark. <laughs> and he'll just, his <laughs> mouth will open slightly. Like, mm, deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I Eyes guess wide. one of the questions I've got just from based on what you said, mate, is how do people know the difference between women in the red dress and diversifying in a way that actually benefits them and the business it's trial and error mm. it is trial and error um again you remember i mentioned at the very beginning of when i sort of took on sbs and built into what i wanted to it was looking from different perspectives yeah being open to differing opinions being open to different perspectives and finding a common denominator between it all mm. it's so key it's, you do your risk management okay it's like the you know you so the woman in the red dress mentality, like, you know, the, the shiny object, all that sort of mentality, right? Oh, this is a cool idea. Let's go for it. If that's all you do and just jump at it, you might win some, you might lose some. It's like stabbing in the dark, mate. Right. Instead, you do your recon, you do your research, you flick the lights on and wait a second and get in your surroundings. You're going to be much better poised to action something that's going to work and stand the test of time. Mm. Take your time, think, th think things through and look at it from all perspectives for actioning. That means client research. That means looking at the model, sitting on it, not stagnating, not procrastinating. Like with Prevelop, I came up with the idea. It was different to what we've actually actioned three weeks later. Yep. But I, as I said to you, I promised myself I would do something every day on that, whether that was just looking at, is there anyone else that does this? Who would be interested in it? Mm. What if we did this? What if I did that? How would the model work with this? Asking the questions that I would get asked myself if I posed that position to someone else as an yeah. offering or service. So taking the time to research, to understand yourself and situate is crucial. Yeah. You know, you jump at things, shiny object again, you'll get fully set into it. Um, nine times out of 10 as well, it will probably fail. You'll get upset about it. And all the time you spent on it, you'll get... Uh, what call, resentful yep. right and the whole time the business you haven't focused on is dropping off mm. take time balance 
it's going to be my key. I'll probably get it tattooed on my forehead. Balance is crucial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really, really is. Okay. So I can't stress that enough. Yeah. For anyone looking to diversify their business, which I can help with, um, <laughs> look at it from all aspects. Yep. Take your time and make sure you're situated in what you're doing effectively before you actually action it. I love it, man. I love it because it's something that, um, like you said, the woman in the red dress, usually it's something that off the back of that idea, there's excitement, there's buzz, they go and give it a crack, mm. then it's not what they thought it was. Yep. And then they're back at square one. And then their business that they actually initially had, which was a really good model that is now suffering, mm. they're now looking at that thinking, fuck, now this is fucked. And yeah, then yeah, this yeah. thing I actually fucking wanted is, isn't working. Yeah. And it's like, when I think about YNL, like we spoke just prior, Young Entrepreneurs Network as it started was networking events. Every two weeks, bro, if I stayed on, for £25 a month, if I'd stayed on that fucking model, mm. that company would be dead. Yeah. Dead yeah. in the wars, I'd be doing something but just off what you said alone there, I would have I would have taken one look at you going, now fuck that idea off. Literally I would have totally said that from day one. Yeah. <laughs> but that, again, yep. but that comes from now, like hindsight's a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. Right? We would not have known at the time that that is not what not to do. Yep. Like all the times I've failed, which is a fucking lot of them, at the time I thought that's gonna work. Mm. But then I look at it in hindsight, I'm like, I never would have thought in a million years now that would work. Yeah. It's um you learn as you go, and again, these things that fail or these ideas that don't work out yep. are good things because mm. you've technically crossed off a potential path and you know that leads to a dead end. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Do not worry about it. I remember when we first spoke, you said that you had like a notes folder of like thirty plus uh, ideas. It's, it's grown. It's grown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's constant now because I'm not I'm no longer strictly sat there thinking e-learning solutions, e-learning yeah. solutions like I have done. Now it's like the world is literally my oyster. Mm. Like I feel very capable and confident in what I do. And every time I fail, it's actually more like an internal challenge. Like actually I can cross that one off, don't have to worry about it anymore. Or okay, that has worked. It can go one of three ways. Which mm. way do we explore? It's it's like a game to be quite honest now, which yep. is quite fun. Yep. I enjoy it. It's um yeah, it's interesting. See the diversifier piece. So if I'm thinking about like I remember you're running through some of the ideas that you had on your like notes on your phone. If mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the fact that one I didn't brush, I brushed over this by the way. See the whole like getting an idea, dedicating set amount of time each day, you yep. miss an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Fucking love that, mate. Like it's something so simple, but it's like it's not a all or nothing. It's uh okay, your current business for me it's like six to six is my usual time working mm -hmm. on YNL and in YNL. Um Cool. I'm going to spend an hour from 7 until 8 for the next three weeks, yep. Monday to Friday, and accumulate 15 hours yeah. on Notion. And it's like, that fucking 15 hours will give me all the recon, all the clarity, all the research of like whether or not this thing even has fucking legs. And if it mm. has legs, then I'll be able to implement it into the current model, or even find a way to implement the current model, or look at other different avenues that could go down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, with the ideas that you've had, remembering how many you, how many you did have, you obviously chose Diversifier. Why? Because it enables me to then explore the other ones by self-educating myself. Okay. The aim is obviously for me to talk to lots of individuals in a lot of niches doing a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I learn just as much as they learn. Mm -hmm. So I can learn the innings of a lot of specific different industries, lots of different roles, positions, markets, through talking, collaborating with a lot of individuals I also then have a network to leverage off. Mm. So it is self-gain as well as enabling others. There's a mutual yep. trade there. Business for me is not just an exchange of monetary funds and gain. It's an exchange of benefits. Mm. So for me, if I, hang on, if I go into coaching and I'm, I've got like a network of like 40 people that do loads of different things, I'm going to learn lots of different industries. Yep. I can then learn, well, hang on a minute. I've learned your, your business here. Mm. I really like that. What if you thought about doing this? I'd really like to invest in that as well. It's opening up doors and opportunities for yep. me as well as them which is really cool. Yep. So it's like taking off all of them at once. <laughs> I'm mm. like, there's so many things I want to do. <laughs> this lets me do it all subtly. I mean, like one of the things, speak on that topic of like, um, you know, when you start YNL, just to jump back a little bit. Yep. Obviously I'm starting a podcast basically yep. as well. Diversify will have its own podcast as well. That's mm. the plan, but nothing special podcast. Now we filmed a whole season. Yeah. Been them all mm. because it didn't work. Yeah. Didn't work. I was sat there editing them. I was thinking like, this, this isn't achieving what I thought I wanted to achieve. Yeah. Keyword, what I thought I wanted to achieve. Key mm. aspect there. I look at it now and I'm like, this isn't the outcome I want. I initially, it's not having the impact I thought it would. Let's change it. We filmed three episodes in a new system now. It's doing exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. Don't be scared or disheartened if it doesn't work out first time. Yeah. Like, 
hindsight again is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Jumping back, the aim of what I was trying to achieve with the podcast then, it wasn't it. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't fully set on it as well. My vision wasn't 100%. Yeah. So therefore I went into it wishy-washy. I didn't do any practice runs. I didn't try it all. I'm so glad I did now. Now I go into it now. I'm like, this is exactly what I want to achieve. Yeah. You know, it's it's learning from the mistakes, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I just want to touch on that quickly. Couldn't agree more, mate. I think with the diversifier piece, it's, it's interesting because what you're actually talking through just now is the the side quest of value that I didn't actually realise I was going to get through running Lionel. Yeah. We're having... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah nearly 80 plus members now it's like that's 80 different businesses mm -hmm. that's like fucking 30 40 different industries yeah. there's then all these little like you've got marketing as an industry but then you've got influencer marketing you've got paid ads you've got yeah. seo you've got all these yeah. all these different subcategories that's yeah. like so, like going to the the q1 meet was fun because it was talking to some people like a lad that makes custom football boots in his shed and yep. has just shot a half million followers on Instagram for it and does it for Premier League plays. I'm like, that's a thing. That's a thing. Like, you would, I've been, I would have been so close minded yep. to that after like talking to Blair, for example, in development and stuff like that. Yep. I said to him, I'm interested in going into that at some point because the area yep. I'm in is very underdeveloped. He said, he said, fuck off residential, go straight into commercial. And he explained the reasons why. Mm. And I was like, I, we said we'd have a call. We never did. I should probably chase that to be fair. But just the re things he was educating me in like mm. a 10 minute chat from like every third word I can understand through his accent, bless him. Um, I was sat there like, I've got access to this understanding for people that have almost done the groundwork for me. Yep. Like he's gone through the five years and the prior experience for his family. He understands that. He's done the hard work, which mm. he's open to passing on to me. Yep. And I'll give it back in whatever format I can. Mm. That's the power of a network. And that's yep. the power of having like-minded individuals in different niches and the value you can gain mm. from them and they can give you. Do you think it's crazy that like, Say, say someone random was just to message Blair and just be like, can I have a th half an hour of your time for you to teach me everything about property? Mm -hmm. He would be like, what the fuck? Like, no. Like, not for, not, not necessarily yeah. not for free, but it's like, if you don't know anyone, you don't like, it's yeah, like, yeah. why would I just take all my time at my busy schedule to hop yeah. on and give time? Yeah. Whereas, like, like you said, when, back to the initial, initial point we made, pure intentions, you're there mm -hmm. to want to fucking build amazing relationships, mm -hmm. but you're also there to want to give and like yeah. help I mean that's the thing him and I were at mutual point we sat there after doing one of the group session bits and we just went, we got to know each other I was like so what do you do I do this what do you do I do this and I was like oh I'm interested in doing that sort of thing would you recommend this hmm. and he said uh, no I'd recommend you do this he said well actually I'm considering about doing this what would you think on that and it was an exchange of value yep. it was something to give and take from each side and that's mm. been facilitated by why now which is lovely yep. but that is again like never expect anything for free and never give anything for free in my opinion yeah. you know like you can give out tasters and things like that to gain attention but the key word is you're still gaining from that to gain yeah. attention to yeah. bring in a potential client yeah. you know that's this is why people do free webinars and seminars and things like that you know, yeah. to gain a potential long-term client nothing is free effectively you're mm -hmm. giving to gain always there's always an exchange yeah someone saying like i want to sit down with you and just tell me everything you do what do they gain from that yeah what, does, what do they gain from that? Like yep. someone comes to me and says, I want you to teach about diversification. I'm like, well, yeah, I can do that for X amount mm. because there's a value in it. Yep. Like I don't gain anything otherwise and I'm just having to sell my time, which could be put in mm. something else. Yeah. I guess it comes back to where we spoke like in regards to people maybe just working like the stats, like standard jobs. Yep. They're given a lot of time for value, which is yeah. going to be like 15 pound an hour. Whereas it's like with, with with the stuff that you value and the, the impact that you can have, especially if you're even, even just using Blair as an example, it's like if him and his dad have spent like a de like his dad's decade, multiple decades in property, yeah. to then Blair, who's learned all that from him, and then from the age of fucking 15, 16, been working with his dad closely in property, mm -hmm. it's like there's a very clear fucking large amount of value that can be provided. Yeah, 100%. 100%. It's, yeah. It's um. Yeah, I just think being in a position and surrounding yourself with people that know the things that you want to know is crucial. Mm. Like having like-minded individuals. It doesn't matter if I'm in digital marketing and he's in property development. Yeah. We can educate each other in some means. All yeah. businesses are interactable. Yeah. They all fit in some weird, unique, puzzly way. Mm. So those those you know relationships can be made. But yeah. a lot of people, as you say, um, expect a lot for a lot of nothing. Mm. There's a level of entitlement, especially in our generation, sadly. It's like the instant gratification, I want now mentality. Mm. No one's prepared to work. Mm. So 
when you have someone that works, sells their time from a nine to five for 15 pound an hour, and they're upset as to why they've spent all their money on their rent, for example, well, your job, you agree to be perceived at 15 pound per hour value. So yeah. why are you upset about that? Yeah. You know, it's the, the value factor of like, if I sell my time, what I'm teaching someone is worth like 150 pound an hour, potentially. Mm that in itself is what I value it at. If someone wants to pay that, there's exchange of value. Yeah. You've sold your time to an employer at £15 an hour. Yeah. They valued it at that as well. Mm. You've agreed that. So what's to complain about? Yeah. I'm very solid on that fact. It's like um, you can work as hard as you want in a job that is valued at £15 an hour. You're always going to get £15 an hour. Yeah. You can argue for raise, promotion, whatever it may be, but that's subject to what they deem your value as. Mm. There's the two types of person mentality. It's the, you know, the employed and the self-employed. Not from a yeah. point of like tax reasons, but when you're self-employed, you self-value yourself and everything you do. Mm. When you're employed, you are valued by the employer. Yeah. So it's very different. And with, again, today's generation, instant gratification, entitlement, stuff like that, it's a demand factor. It's like, I want this, I want this, I want this, but no preparation to work because they want it immediately. Yeah. Whereas when you're actually active and you think, well, I want this, I know it's going to take time. I'm going to put the effort in and gain the value from that you reap the benefits. I also think there'll be a lot of people listening just now that haven't actually ever even thought about it in the way that mm. it's been explained. And it's like we spoke about, there's an aspect of um, like a lack of, I mean, Hormozis, we saw a lot about it. It's like the ignorance tax, mm. like by you not yep. understanding these things or not what being willing to dig a bit deeper and also instead being butthurt about it mm. and being like, I'm only getting paid this amount. That fucking yeah. sucks. Yes, it does fucking suck. But like you said earlier on, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. What's going to be the so It always makes you laugh when, when someone will, from an uneducated point of view, start talking about uh, like bullshit tax evasion. Mm. Like this person is paying off tax, this person is self-employed, this, they do that. It's like, you could do it too. Mm. It's not illegal. Yeah. A lot of the wet methods, the things you're talking about, like being paid X and taking dividends isn't illegal. <laughs> yeah. Like it's smart taxation. Yeah, you don't like it because you can't do it because you haven't done anything to get yourself in a position to do that. Yeah. you'd rather do the easier method which is what society wants you to do anyway yeah. I mean I'm very very blunt on that point there's nothing wrong with working for someone else there's nothing wrong from doing a 9 to 5 there's nothing wrong from working like living to work if that's yeah. what you want to do do it just don't complain about it yeah. you've chosen to do it yeah. if your situation is that tough to where you can't get out of it fair play but you always have a choice always yeah. you always have a choice like I chose to um, obviously sell my company, which is making me money. I could have just stayed on that. It would have lasted forever, but I could have said that I took the risk and I chose to work 80 hours and not be paid for the first six months. Yeah, I chose to scale it. I chose to diversify. I chose to do this. I chose to join Why Now. It's all my choices. Mm. Half of them, loads of them backfired. Some of them worked really well. Yeah, Worth it. A lot mm. of people don't want to do that because they lose security and safety. Change factor again. Yeah, yeah They don't have the basis of understanding or education or want to learn. Like um, a lot of people haven't got the educational support behind them to go out and try these things. It's a very protective mentality. Well, don't do that. No, you're okay in what you're doing. Stay where you are. Very conservative mentality. Mm. It's the worst thing you can be if you want more for yourself. Yeah. If you don't, you just want to do what you're doing. Brilliant. Crack on. Yeah. Just don't complain. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. I think it's like the the control factor for me was initially like when I'm thinking about entrepreneurship, it's like I'm in complete control mm. of how much I earn, how much I work, and albeit it to begin with, you don't feel like you're in control of any either yeah, of those yeah, yeah, things yeah, yeah. in it. 100%. And it's a weird kind of paradox because to yeah. begin with, you're not, you're not, you don't feel like you're really in control. But as time goes on and like the business starts to scale and you start mm. to properly learn yeah. um, and get the right things in place, you start to realize that like you are in control of those factors. And it's yeah. also, it's like we spoke about before, it's like, say we never hired Reese and instead I went and got a fucking Porsche Taycan, which yeah, is a yeah, grand yeah. a month. It's like, people would perceive me as more wealthy, have more dough, even though we're paying Reese obviously more than a fucking Porsche Taycan. It's like, <laughs> like, that to us is going out and signing five YNL clients mm. to get a Porsche Taycan. Yeah. Or it's going out and signing two Immortals clients, that's a Porsche Taycan. Mm. And it's like, I now have direct, okay, I'm going to put in an extra £200 in market and spend mm -hmm. to sign five more clients Investment, yeah. and I'm going to be able to put in a bit That's more the, time mm. to fucking spawn in five more clients that's yeah, going to yeah. pay for that thing yeah, yeah. and it's like I now have control yeah. and power. I remember, um, I remember the first time my old group of mates suddenly realised that I had like money. Mm. The first question was, what the fuck are you still driving a polo? <laughs> yeah. 
And I was like, that is the mentality I don't need. Like you don't have a fucking clue. Mm. So just shut it. Yep. Because I'm not going to sit here and explain as to, first of all, you don't understand what I'm doing. You don't take any time to. And second of all, I'm not going to bother trying to un, like explain to someone that thinks that that's what I should do with my money personally yep. like if you want to go buy a flashy car do your thing I did do it ironically <laughs> uh, I regret it but I did do it um, but trying to explain to someone that doesn't understand it but also gets upset of the situation and does nothing about it you are wasting your time <laughs> yep. don't bother with it surround yourself with people that want to understand you that will support you and are just as motivated as you are yep. everyone else is you know you know, they can do what they want. It's mm. not a piece of me, personally. Yeah. I've got time for people, don't get me wrong. Loads of my, loads of people I know are, you know, can be like that, but they're not in the, they're not in my circle. Yeah. I'm like, are you right, mate? That's about it. That's all they're going to get. Yeah. They don't need to know anything else and they won't because it's not, it's got no value to them. And what they have to give to me in return has the exact value of zero. So mm. I'm not going to bother with it. Yeah. Completely agree, mate. Completely you know, agree. It can be, I can come a, quite come across quite harsh and cold with that one, mm. but it needs to be done because you save your own peace with it. Yeah. When you've got people, you know, effectively giving you shit mm. for having achieved something and not, and doing it in a way that they don't like. Yeah. What gives them the right to tell you that, mm. to have that opinion? Yep. Yeah. It's like, you know, having money, people will have a go at you or be ups, uh, upset with you for having money and spending it. Yeah it doesn't fucking affect you <laughs> it's yeah. nothing how i spend my money has nothing to do with you so why are you pressed yeah why are you pressed by it and you can tell why that is it's because they can't do it yeah it's saving that. your piece is an important important note mate i think that's like you said you, the a couple of things that we touched on it's like not being willing to give up something that's not so good for something that could be better because of the uncomfortable yes. aspect of yes. that that i think that plays an important important point i think as well it's like the the impact of being surrounded by others that not necessarily it's, it's not that you want them to see this, the world the same way that you do you want them to see the world a bit differently and help you educate you on that piece but there's that, these like foundations that are like alignment from a values perspective yep. and alignment from probably like a business philosophy aspect yes, as well of yeah. like effectively this whole thing is a philosophy yeah yeah, yeah. fact, it's what it is it's like just to summarise you know you, change is not a bad thing yep. it's necessary mm. it's inevitable and it's going to happen so be open yep. to it and accept it having a strong foundation on the other side to support that change is just as crucial without that change will show you all the cracks in your armor and they'll be exploited mm. so you need the balance of two to move forward and that's yeah. you know for someone that works a nine to five through to someone that runs a billion valued company right you need those two forms of balance to live a successful and diverse life in my mm -hmm. opinion yeah. some people may differ on that but people's standards of life differ as well so yeah. it's dependent on what you want to achieve really 100 yeah. percent mate We've been going for like an hour and 25, an hour and 20. There nice. are there about, mate. Very Fucking nice. flew in, bro. That's part one, part two. <laughs> it's going to have to be, bro. It's going to have to be, mate. But honestly, bro, it's been fucking sick. We've also like, this is one of the first podcasts I've come into, like I said to you before, with next to zero prep because I knew, I mean, our first strategy yeah. call was like two and a half hours long. Yeah. To give clarity, yeah. we watched the sunset in each other's glasses. <laughs> yeah. Never spoke to him before. It was like three hours long. I watched the sunset in Glasgow. <laughs> Fucking, Good crack. Yeah, it was yeah. sick, mate. But in terms of where people can find you, mate, because obviously you've got a a podcast, you've got these things that you're going to be pushing forward with. You want to go ham from a content perspective. Yes. You've got your own little yeah. content studio within the, the new do. space that you've I got, do, mate. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot coming for you. Where can people find you, mate? Uh, so I have a personal brand just started, which is Benjamin Max Lifts on Instagram and TikTok. And then also the Diversifier brand, which is diversifier.io, can be found on Google itself as well as on Instagram. Uh, but everything else, don't worry about them because it's mainly B2B shit. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes. But for me directly is those two Instagrams. Yeah. yeah. And you'll see the kind of B2B stuff on his personal Instagram anyways. I mean, yeah. one of the things that I even touch on is all like, the lifting stuff that you're doing as well. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I'm going training off this. Yeah, with your missus. Fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, it's like my personal brand is very much a case study for mm. Diversifier. So mm. it's showing like, for example, my pillars in life. I've got my professional and yeah. my personal and yeah. they break down into, you know, it, within personal, you've got like emotional well-being, spiritual well-being, yep. mental well-being. And if, obviously the sort of professional aspect you've got, you know, the physical aspects, the wealth generation and the professional capabilities. Yep. Now I try and touch on all of them every day. Um, because they're the things that give me value. So mm. I will see someone like you today, I'll do something professional, which is talk about work and business. I'll train today. I saw my missus this morning. I'll be meshing the boys later today. I don't feel like I have to. 
I want to, but I don't dive into any of them and spend eight hours a day on each one. Yep. Makes sense? Yep. That's very much how I live my life. That will be what's reflected in my personal brand because that's what Diversifier is about, having balance, equal value in all the pillars mm -hmm. that make up your life. Yours will be different to mine. Yep. Mine will be different to anyone else's. It's all open to what you value, but it's that's what will be reflected for my personal brand. So we'll take a photo in a minute and that'll be going on Instagram later. See yep. my point? Yep. As well as I'll take one Bex later and I'll be like, my trip to Scotland. I did 7,000 <laughs> things and flew twice <laughs> in one day, you know? <laughs> that's the plan, basically. Yeah, 100%, yeah. bro. Well, trips, if you're listening, and I feel like from this episode alone, you'll be able to tell the type of value that Ben can provide from a content perspective, podcast perspective, like any sort of... Um, yeah, any, anything in that sort of realm, mate. You'll be able to, anyone listening will be able to tell the type of value that you can provide, man, which trips, get on it. Like, you're going to be an early adopter, going to be one of those first 100 <laughs> followers. Um, I do believe that Ben is going to blow up from a content perspective. You can tell from the conviction in his voice, the stuff he puts forward. He believes very much in this philosophy. I believe in it a lot because I've seen so many fucking young entrepreneurs, mate, that struggle with this mm. exact problem you're it looking at. It's a pain so point. It's, it's a, a big pain, pain mate. It's yeah. a big pain. But and it's not just specifically to young individuals as well. Yeah. I've noticed that. It's quite yeah. interesting. Which is mad. One of the threes in his 40s. Well, wow. yeah, which is um, and he's been head of a, he's a head project manager for a construction new build company down where we are. Mm. He's been there for twenty years. Wow. So it's 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 universal this yeah. pain point, which is great for me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a negative, but it's great for me. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But yeah. honestly, thank you so much for coming on. Cheers, honestly, it's Sick fucking class, absolutely yeah. class. Um, trips. If you're on YouTube, obviously these podcast episodes are rolling out every two weeks. If you're enjoying these types of episodes, be sure to let us know so we can just continue to fucking nail these um, or even ramp them up. If you just want to see a weekly, fucking let us know. We can try our hardest to make it happen. Um, if you're on Spotify trips, be sure to leave a review and thank you as always for listening. Yeah.